Let's uh, talk about how it's going to happen for the people who are affected by this. The evacuation order has been lifted. A hundred families or so still out of their houses. High water preventing inspectors from doing a thorough job, a thorough assessment of the flood damage. The provincial emergency program, as we tell you, says that there are 15 houses still too wet, too full of water to allow safe entry. So as the flood victims begin to clean up their homes and try to pick up their lives, it is becoming clear to many of them that not all homeowners are going to be treated the same way. Tonight, some are discovering that they are not eligible for disaster relief. They're desperate to understand why, and they're furious. You want to buy a house for a dollar? Sure. <laughs> you have any way to deal with this, right? Devin Mills may be relieved the floodwaters are subsiding, but he won't be getting any relief from the province. Mills is one of several homeowners who doesn't qualify for financial aid because he rents this home to his tenant, Tina Baker. Seems ludicrous. What does it matter who owns the house? I'll tell you what, if you knocked on every door along this street, you'll find the banks own the houses. Everybody's got a mortgage, right? Okay, now what's the difference whether they're paying rent or they're paying a mortgage? As a renter, Baker does qualify for financial assistance on the contents of her home. That stuff is just stuff. That's replaceable. Like, I want to come back here. But for that to happen, Mills, as landlord, will have to pay for the structural repairs without help. All the wall, at least four feet up, has got to come off. Right? All, all the electrical has to be redone. I'm a builder myself, and I can tell you that this isn't going to be cheap to do. You could drop $100,000 fixing this place up and putting it back together easily. Mills's MLA says he understands. Bill Routley's own basement flooded when the deluge began. Today, the front yard sports its very own trench. Literally looks like a bunch of dumped mud right now, and it's going to be, you know, thousands of dollars to deal with, and I will not be uh, applying for disaster relief. He says the province has a responsibility to help those frozen out of disaster funding. It is an issue of uh, fairness that we, we have to explore because it, uh, I certainly understand their concerns. And we were seeking an explanation from Solicitor General Kashid. He flew over this stricken area on the weekend. The Disaster Financial Assistance Program, which I approved on Friday afternoon, is meant there to deal with people for their immediate losses, people's, uh, where their uh, residents are their principal residents. You know, that said, I understand there may be some people uh, that may be affected, such as the landholders of that, and we'll work with them. For Devin Mills, those considerations can't come soon enough. I think that everybody should be on an equal playing field here. Like, I'm not asking for any better treatment than anybody else that's been affected. A news legislature reporter Shachi Curl joins us now with more on the story. Shachi, some real frustration. When can the stricken homeowners expect to see the disaster relief? Well, Hudson, the Solicitor General is giving a time frame of about a month, but there are no guarantees. Cash Heed says before money is approved, inspectors have to finish doing their jobs assessing the damage. And tonight we're learning that high water that is persisting and sitting in more than a dozen homes is keeping that from happening. So we'll have to see to start with how long that process takes before we know when the checks will actually be in the mail. And of course, it all depends on if it happens again, if there's more rain. That's right. All right, Shachi Kuro reporting. Shachi, thanks. You're welcome.